people, as the Father has sent me, I send you. Receive the Holy Spirit, the sins that you forgive will be forgiven, the sins that you retain will be retained in heaven. That is the feast of Easter. That's why Jesus died on the cross for those few sentences. So that through his ministry, by immersing in the passion and death that he has accomplished for us, we will be redeemed from the enslavement of sin, we set free, become children of God, and give us the pledge of everlasting life. That's why Easter was celebrated. Purposely for the forgiveness of sins. That's why during Lent and during the preparation for Holy Week, our words for you were return to the sacrament of penance. And for those that for some reason did not go, you are wasting your time in this view this morning celebrating Easter. Because the purpose of Easter is to return to the Lord. And through his mercy that he has accomplished for us, you will have the renewal of yourself to become more aware of his love for you and the mercy in that divine love that he has poured out for us. Is that today, that first reading, I wish I can have it by, by itself for a morning of retreat. Because there is so much to be said about that first reading. And then you are going to see why my frustration comes through. Why I get so frustrated when I see community who really is so full of apathy. Listen to the first reading today. And for those who love the scripture. The community of believers were together with the apostles to hold dear to their teaching. And the apostles were not teaching nothing but the words of our Savior, the message that Jesus brought from heaven. The message of love, the message of hope, the message that he brought from the eternal Father for a broken world. They were dear and holding fast to the teachings of the apostles. Number two, they have in common the needs of each one. Today you live in a parish, people die, people go through a hard time, and the community of believers, the community of St. Rita, remain like, well, what can I do for them? That was not the idea. They share everything equally among them. And there was no one that was really in need of anything. The communion that they had among them, that they were so much, as we say, into this, that the care of each other and to be there for each other was their main objective. Number three, the breaking of the bread. That was the Eucharist. They used to go to the temple together, but they used to break bread in their own homes. Because the Eucharist is not for everybody. It's already from the beginning, yeah? The Eucharist is not for everybody. Not because it's time for communion, everyone that can have it come up to communion. It's for those who really are in the union of the love. Those whom Jesus said, if you have nothing, have something to do with your brethren, leave and go and reconcile. Because we are coming to be in union with the Holy One. That's why we call it Holy Communion. They experienced the Lord Jesus there. And the way in which they celebrate the Eucharist is a reflection of their life. If I want, if you want me to tell you what St. Peter's parish communion and love there is, I will tell you exactly how it is. It is not. Because the way we celebrate the Eucharist, we don't celebrate with fervor. Did you read the words? With fervor and enthusiasm. I mean, the 
go to a sign, open a book and sing. Respond. Try to show interest. This is why the Eucharist was celebrated with great joy. Because that Eucharist was the reaping, the harvest of the love. If you want to know what's going on there in Belmar, in Barrington and Magnolia, come to see how we celebrate here. Because that is a reflection of our life. And the fourth one is prayer. If I ask you, when is the last time you pray? Say this morning, when I wake up, I make the sign of the cross and say good morning, Jesus. Or maybe it was two weeks ago, maybe it was not. Why? Because, dear people, those are the four important foundations of a Christian calling, of a Christian community. If one goes, the whole community goes. And that's why they attract others to the faith. Are you attracting others to the faith, dear people? Are you bringing hundreds of people with you to church? Just look around you. My dear people, if we want to be authentic, we need to return to the source. And the source is the scripture. <coughs> they were dear the teaching of the apostles. We are dear to the teaching of the apostles when we are living in apostasy, when we are living with no marriage, when we are living together, when we are killing our own fruit of our womb, when we are destroying the environment, when we don't speak and speak very highly of one another and sometimes even chip one another down. I like to have a retreat on those four because I cannot continue because it's too much that we can say about it. But those are the four elements that build community. In the Gospel today, Jesus appeared on Easter and Thomas was not with them. And Jesus gave to the church what the church needs so much, especially today. Healing, forgiveness, reconciliation, peace. Those are the elements that the church needs today. And that is what we found in the sacrament of penance. Peace I give to you. Because if you really have the gift of the Holy Spirit, that I will stand from the Father upon you on Pentecost. You can bring that healing. You can bring that forgiveness. As the Father has sent me, I now send you. My time on earth is up. I have to go to the Father. And you are the extension of my ministry. Whatever you, whatever you decide, if you want to forgive them or retain them, whatever you do, will be done in heaven. Some of you will say, the priest has the right to do so. <laughs> yep. The priest in the confessional have four roles. Number one, he is a teacher. He's not going to tell you what he thinks, but what the church teaches. Because you come and say, Father, I used to want to accept Oh, that's nice. But God love you. No, he said the church teaching is. He is a teacher. He is a judge. He make a sentence. A judge? Yeah. He has to know if you really are not right. Father, I am married, but I, you know, I cheat on my wife. But, you know, I cannot let go of this relationship because I love this woman. But the, church, the priest was right, raised his hand for absolution. Because what you say in the act of contrition, let's go together. I confess my sins and avoid the occasion of sin. Okay? The priest in the confession too is a healer. He has to heal. But how can I heal you when you don't want to be healed? Father, 
I cannot forgive myself for what I did for her eternity. I destroyed my young baby within me. I cannot forgive myself. He cannot forgive you. He cannot heal you. Healing begins from here. God will forgive you anytime you come to Him. But you have to forgive yourself. And the priest is the leader of the community by which he observed, observed, observed from the sin on behalf of God and on behalf of your brothers and sisters. That by your private sin or public sin, you have heard them. Because we are the body of Christ. You see? Oh, there is so much to be discussed about the sacrament of penance. But we are limited in time. And then Thomas was not there. And the disciples said to him, We saw the Lord. He is real. He appeared to us. He said, You bunch of. If I don't see with my own hand the mark and put my hand into his side, I don't believe. He said, You are seeing a ghost who are seeing imagination. Believe me, there is some imagination. Sometimes your mother died, your father died, and you hear the voice of your mother. Or you see her going by. Or to see her calling me. Those things happen, dear people, because we are conditioned. But the marks of the risen Christ are the wounds in his chest, in his hands. Come, Thomas, put your fingers, put your hand in my side. And do not, become, do not continue to be unbeliever, but believe. Of course, in front of that. In front of the shamefulness, he said, Oh my God, oh my Lord, <coughs> which I hope that you say at the consideration. When the priest elevate the host and the chalice, those words be your words under your tongue, my Lord and my God. <coughs> and then we'll tell you something else. During the consecration, if the Pope enters this church, you don't move. That is the time of sacredness. There is no movement at that time. You're coming from the bathroom because you have to go stop where you are. When the concentration finished, you continue. <coughs> you have been told this many times ago. It's a holy time. It's when Christ becomes present on the outer world. And you don't take away from no one by distraction of foot or movement. But I like to concentrate my last thoughts on that letter of St. Peter. And I read it very well. When St. Peter said we are blessed, that by the resurrection of Jesus, we have been called to a life everlasting. But then he said something, which is something that we are experiencing in our day. He said, for the time being, the one that you don't see and believe in, it's going to make you go through a tribulation. Tribulation. And tribulation means hard times for your faith. And then he said, and those who remain faithful, those who remain faithful to the fire of testing, they will be the most of most <coughs> An act of God. Because the church has to make a weaning. Has to make, what do we call it? As the gardener do after a harsh winter. He came with his prunes. And he has to cut the dead branches. And sometimes there are people who will become the dead branch. That Christ does not want us. And in the last years, the Christ of our church has cut even bishops and priests from his kingdom. And even people of great astony. When you are a dead branch, you are nothing but put for the fire. That is the tribulation that Peter is speaking. So that we will be prepared for the day of Christ, when Christ will come, because that is Easter, Easter anticipation of the last day.
when Christ will come. That is why Sunday is the day of the Lord, because we are preparing for his coming. The Christ who died is the Christ who is risen, the Christ we will welcome again. And those who are prepared to be Christ, they have to undergo purification. Is that what we experience today? Yesterday I was here with Sister Mary, which I left early because I cannot take it anymore. For children who are coming for First Communion, parents drop them. Some of them even bring them. They forgot to bring them. I'm busy. And I say to myself, these children are traumatized. Sister Marion is doing a wonderful job with them. We try to prepare them for this great day. After next Saturday, you don't see them. And so you confirm them. If you are in my shoes as a father, when you become a son of the Church of the Father, and that is the frustration I experience in people. A frustration that you cannot build tomorrow. Those children will go to Mass unless their parents are going to bring them. You don't expect miracles from little ones. But their parents are alienated. Alienated in their world that I live. A world, unfortunately, without God. They are trying to find themselves, but they don't know how to return. And they don't know how to come to Jesus. Because they, they never, from the beginning, had the foundation. This is why, dear people, we need to really be very conscientious that we are the builders of tomorrow's church. And all of us, are much important in this building. Don't tell me you as a pastor need to do this. I, do, I need to do nothing. And I cannot do nothing by myself. That's why when the bishop was here to install me, he said, and these people as a community, they will work with you and you work with them. And for that reason you form councils and you form community of faith. So that they built. And that's why I return now and I conclude my few words to you. That's why I go back to the first reading. Is scripture the foundation of your life? Or that book is under a table or on a shelf that never open unless you want to dust it once in a while? Is the word of God something that is real to you? Here people will not, we don't grow in the word of God because I want the word of God. From my infancy, that word of God was always in our hands. And thank God for that priest when George really make us understand that the word of Jesus, he called it the, the, the voice of the lover. When George used to call the scripture the voice of the lover. Because the lover loves me. And he loves me with a reason, so that I will love and return his church. Is scripture something that is serious in your hands? Do you read scripture with your family? Do you reflect about the reading before you come to Mass? What are you going to put into the liturgy is what's on the table. If you come here and sit there to inter be entertained, and they have like you know, the, the conductor there going from one thing to another, you go home empty. You need to really put into liturgy your whole being. Do you know that during the Mass, all our senses are being used? We have the hands to hold not only the Word of God, but even Jesus, our hands. We have the eyes to watch and to see what's going on in the liturgy. We have the ear to hear the message. We have the nose to smell the incense. We have the feet to stand. We have the mouth to speak. The church involves the whole body in the liturgy. Because liturgy is the life of the church. And you are the life of the church. And you are the one that after Mass, the deacon and I will say to you, go in peace now. You are equipped. 
go now in that dark of that world, go in that pagan world, and bring Jesus by being different to the world, the way the world presents our values. It's the teaching of the apostles, the revered books. Or we criticize the Pope and the bishop and everyone under the sun because of encyclic or teaching that they give us. Do we really care about the, the community? Somebody on your street who has experienced some hardship, do we go out of our way to do something for them, to ease their pain? Is the church, is the Eucharist, the ascension, and there is no if or but, there is no slow or stop, there is no sickness or health, the Eucharist is a must, and when you, the Eucharist becomes it, you can say goodbye because the grip of the evil one is not upon, upon you. Because there is where we destroy Satan. When the priest says, this is my body, this is my blood, at that very moment, Christ put under his feet Satan and his power. Do we pray? And not just rosary and uh, devotions. Do we have a dialogue? Do we open our hearts for him in the need that we need and the praise that we give him? My dear people, this is what builds community. And we need to really take it serious. Because if we are continue to do what we have done for this last 30 years, we are going to be sorry. I hope and pray today on this beautiful day of divine mercy. This was given to us by John Paul who today the church elevated him to be blessed. I was told, I never thought that the remains of the popes that are blessed are brought up in the basilica. And John Paul now is in the basilica of St. Sebastian. And there the preacher can go and view him, not view him, in the, in the, but in the castle. The remains now are in the basilica of St. Peter. Look what John Paul taught us. Don't be afraid to bring Christ. Speak the truth. And let no one put you, put you down and shame you for what you stand by. That's what John did for 27 years. And that's why we were admired him. Because he was a man of principle. But he did not know nothing. No Russia, no Poland, and no world will bring him down. This is our church, dear people. And this church is based on Christ, who by his love for us, and by the calling of each one, by virtue of baptism, he is sending us constantly to be ambassadors of the true peace and reconciliation. And God, 2000, when he, when he canonized Mr. Fastina, he gave us this Sunday, to remind us of God's mercy, of God's love, and to inspire us to build his kingdom. Here on earth, till one day, we arrive at the fullness of time, at the end of time. God bless you.